For option one, we are looking at weather data for the Manchester, New Hampshire area. And we're just gonna pick a random month as our starting point. You can pick any month you want and look at the next two years and one month starting from the month you picked. So 25 data values, 25 months in a row starting from that random month you pick. And the category of data we're looking at is TPCP. And click on the link here for the data set to open it up. And TPCP should be uh, one of your columns. And if you go to um, that second tab here, you can see what that stands for. It's the total precipitation. So all the um, you know, rain, snow, all the precipitation in the month measured in tenths of a millimeter. So coming back to the first columns, you can see the year listed and then what month of the year um, each row is. So January of 1930, February of 1930 is row two, March of 1930 is row three, and so on. So I'm just going to do a quick scroll down, completely random, stop somewhere, right there, November of 1952. So um, row two 275, and I'm coming back here to um, M. M was my TC, uh, TPCP, total precipitation. And where did I say I was? 275. And you can start anywhere randomly. I'm just gonna take the next 25 data values. So that would be all the way up to 299. And I'm gonna wanna take those data values and paste them into StatCrunch and um, an easy way to get into StatCrunch is just open up any one of your problem, problem sets, question help, and you can get into StatCrunch um, that way. And so those 25 data values, starting with November of that year I picked, and you can see I have 25 data values um, for total precipitation for those 25 months in a row. And StatCrunch makes it really easy to do, to do this next part, construct a histogram for our sample data and then talk about the sample mean, the median, and the standard deviation for those 25 data values. And then finally, we're also gonna discuss if our data is skewed in any way. So notice my data here is in the column called variable one, var one. You can rename that if you want, um, but you just need to know the name of the column your data is in. I'm gonna to go to graph histogram. And from there, you select the a column that your ver um, your data is in. Mine is called var1. And it should pop over here once you've selected it. And you can click to put the mean and the median on your histogram if you want. And there's other options you can mess around with. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit compute, which you can see is down here at the bottom. And when you do that, you get a histogram. So just to talk about what we're looking at here, we have five bins of data. The first bin here is counting how many months from our data set. Uh, there was between zero and 500 for the precipitation, and it's a total of two months that fell in that category. The next bin is counting how many months from our data were between 500 and 1,000 for our precipitation. And remember, our precipitation is being measured in tenths of a millimeter. And so 500 tenths of a millimeter would be 50 millimeters. And if we convert that to inches, which is something most of us are more familiar with, uh, 50 millimeters is right around two inches of precipitation. And a thousand uh, milli uh, tenths of a millimeter, which would be 100 millimeters, that's just below four inches of precipitation. So in this range, we're talking between two to four inches of rainfall roughly. 12 months from our data set fell within that range. And then the next bin roughly is four to six inches of precipitation. And out of the data set we had, it looks like seven months fell within that range and so on. Now, depending on the months you choose, your histogram is gonna look a little different. There might be more months in a certain bin and less in a different one. So a couple things I wanna talk about. One is it would be nice to rename your column so that it doesn't say var one here. You could call it TPCP or something else that gives more explanation about what the data is we're looking at. But also just having five bins here, we kinda of see the shape of the distribution. 
but it doesn't pop out at us quite as much as uh, it could. So if we go to edit, you see you have the option to change the width of these bins. So right now they're going in chunks of 500, 0 to 500, and then 500 to 1,000, um, and so on. If we write a 300 there, or something smaller, and you can play around with different values for your particular data set, you can start to see the shape of the distribution uh, even better. So it looks like in our distribution, we have the bulk of the data between 300 to 1500. Most of the data falls within that range, and it's kind of symmetric with the peak in the middle. It looks kind of like what you'd expect from a normal distribution in that range. And we'll talk a lot more about normal distributions as this class goes on. But the bulk of the data is here, it peaks in the middle, and it's pretty symmetric. But what this distribution has, what our data has, is a tail going off to the right. And so it's skewed to the right by months that had an abnormally high amount of precipitation. And whenever you have data that's skewed to the right, you'll notice that the mean, which is marked by this green line here, gets pulled towards where the skew is. So our larger data values, abnormal months with really high amounts of precipitation, skew the mean to the right, whereas the median does tend to not be affected by outliers quite as much. It stays closer to the center of the bulk of our data, um, which you can see the red line is more in the center. What could cause some of these outliers? Maybe a hurricane put a lot of rainfall uh, in the area, or maybe there was a blizzard, a lot of precipitation um, through snowfall, but a really bad storms, hurricanes, things like that can have uh, abnormal, unusual months that are going to skew the data to the right. Just to see what happens, I'm going to drop it down to 250, see if we get even more of a picture um, with our data of this uh, right tail skew. And we kind of do. Um, it looks like there is, it's looking even more normal distribution with it all clustered here together and pretty symmetric. But then there are just some months that, see how there's a gap here? These are really abnormal months. These are outliers far away from the bulk of the data um, that are skewing the mean and making this a skewed right distribution. Every data set is going to be a little bit different, but you'll probably notice something similar. And because in a 25 month span, there usually is at least a few months that are abnormal, have a lot of rainfall, a big snowstorm. And so you're going to get some outlier months that skew your data to the right. Closing out of that and then going up here to stat, you can go to stat, summary stats. And we're going to uh, do some summary stats on our column of data here. So click the column where your data is. And we want the mean. And everything you click is going to show up over here. And if you hold um, control down, you can get more than one item over here. So the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, so on. You could even select them everything if you want. But um, let's just get the median. Let's just look at those. That'll be enough. Hit compute. And though now for our data, I have what the mean is the standard deviation, the median, and so on. And this is backing up what we saw in that histogram. The mean is larger to the, uh, than the median. It is skewed to the right end of the data set. The next question is talking about the middle 68% of your sample data. Now, 25 data values, if you do 68% of 25, the answer is 17. So let's look at what the middle 17 data values are. So in StatCrunch, I'm going to uh, go to my data here and sort it. And so I'm going to select the column I want to sort here. And let's just sort it ascending is fine and hit compute. Oh, I need to select a variable to sort by. Sort by, um, again, that column that you're working with and hit sort. And so now you can see all the data is put in order from the month with the least amount of precipitation to the month with the most. And so the middle 17 data values, that means we're throwing out eight because we have a total of 25. So ignore the first four, 
and ignore the bottom four. The middle 17 data values would be those right there. For, so from 669 up to 1319. That's the range for the middle 68% of my sample data. So let me pull back up, and in StatCrunch, it um, hides the things you have done. Um, so my summary stats are right here. Pop those back up. Comparing that in those middle 68% in terms of the sample standard deviation, we just want to talk about whether the middle 68% of our data fall within one standard deviation of the mean. What that means is if you take the mean and then you subtract the standard deviation, is that less than uh, the lowest value in your middle 68? And this would be less than 669. And if you take the mean and then add the standard deviation, is that result larger than the uh, biggest value here? in your middle 68% of your data. And that would again be the case. And you're gonna find that that most likely will be the case for every sample unless it has an extreme skew or something really unusual. The middle 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. And later on in the course, as we talk about the normal distribution, one of the qualities of the normal distribution is that 68% of the data always falls within one standard deviation of the mean when we're working with the normal distribution. That's part of what's known as the empirical rule. But when you are working with a distribution that is skewed, like this one skewed to the right, it is possible that the middle 68% of the data will not fall within one standard deviation. So we're just checking to see if it does or it doesn't for the sample that you chose. And then to wrap up option one, look at some other students who also chose option one and talk about the similar similarities and differences between your histograms, your sample means, medians, and standard deviations, and why those differences might exist, what could be some reasons. And also if your results are very, very similar, talk about why that might be the case as well.